Please make sure for this video that you have your weather and climate guided notes that I provided you in class today and make sure just like we did with the oceanography notes that you get your uh, weather and climate guided notes signed by a parent so that way I know that you have completed this assignment at home. Make sure that this assignment is completed by Thursday and like I suggested in class we are beginning the project tomorrow on Wednesday so um, hopefully you are watching this video tonight on Tuesday to get this assignment done and ready for your project tomorrow. In this unit for weather and climate we have been talking about the air masses and fronts and different things that affect the weather. Uh, so for our air masses and fronts that's what we are going to start our video on. An air mass, as we know and we learned in class, is a huge body of air that has similar temperature, humidity, and air pressure. And I know we have already learned uh, what temperature, humidity, and air pressure are. So remember, an air mass is that body of air that has those three things in common. The types of air masses that we have, the first one is maritime tropical. And remember, maritime means that it comes from the ocean, and tropical means that it comes from a warm place near the equator. So this is a warm, humid air mass that form over the oceans near the tropics. It is warm because it's tropical and humid because it is maritime and picking up moisture from the ocean. In summer, it brings hot, humid weather to the United States because remember that is what we are focusing on is the United States. So in summer it brings us hot humid weather. In winter it can bring either heavy rain or snow depending on the uh, temperature. The next air mass is maritime polar which means it is a air mass that comes from a cold ocean. So this is a cool, humid air mass that forms over the icy cold North Pacific and North Atlantic Oceans, as those are the two that affect the United States. In summer, it brings cool, humid air, and it often also brings fog, rain, and cool temperatures along with uh, the cool, humid air mass. Uh, for continental tropical, remember this is the air mass that comes from land and it is uh, from a hot place. So for the United States, this would come from Mexico. This is the hot dry air mass that forms only in summer over the dry areas over southwest and northern Mexico. For continental polar, this is the cold air mass that comes from land, so this would come from Canada for the United States. So this is the large continental polar air mass that forms over central and northern Alaska and Canada. It brings cold, dry air. In winter, it is clear cold, dry air that comes from a continental polar air mass. In summer, storms may occur when the continental polar air masses move, north, move south and meet maritime tropical air masses moving north. So this is when the storm can bring uh, the continental polar air mass from Canada and the maritime tropical air mass from either the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean coming from the equator is moving north. That is when we can get storms in the summertime. All right. How air masses move. In the northern hemisphere, the prevailing westerlies, which is one of the four types of global winds that we talked about, move the air masses from the west to the east. That is why they are called the westerlies, because they are coming from the west. Fronts. As we discussed fronts today in class, a front is an area where the two air masses meet and they do not mix together and that becomes a front. The types of fronts. 
The kind of front that develops depends on the characteristics of the air masses and how they are moving. A cold front. Cold air is dense and tends to sink, which I know we remember from when we discussed this before spring break. Warm air is less dense and tends to rise. When a rapidly moving cold air mass runs into a slowly moving warm air mass, the denser cold air slides under the lighter warm air. So remember they are moving in two opposite directions and the cold air is pushing the warm air up because the cold air is denser. The warm air will cool and condense since it's being pushed up into the atmosphere. Lots of water means heavy rain or snow and little water means it's just going to be cloudy skies. It moves quickly causing abrupt weather changes. So this is the fastest moving front that will cause stuff to happen outside where it might be sunny when we come to school but then when we leave it's starting to rain because the cold front has come in. Warm front. Moving warm air collides with slowly moving cold air. So remember they are both moving in the same direction and in the warm front the warm air moves over the cold air. If the warm air is humid, showers and light rain fall where the two air masses meet. If the, air, the warm air is dry, scattered clouds will form. The weather may last several days. The weather is warm and humid after the front passes. That is why it is called a warm front, because we get warm weather associated with it. In winter, the warm front can bring snow, even though this is very, very rarely happens because it's so warm outside. Stationary fronts. This is when neither the cold or the warm air mass has enough force to move the other because remember they're almost at the same temperature. Where the air masses meet we can get clouds that form to make the rain, snow, or fog. Occluded fronts. Remember this is the difficult one that has three air masses. So this is when the warm air mass is caught between two cold air masses. One is cold and one is cool. So the denser cool air masses move underneath the warm air mass and the warm air mass is the one that gets pushed up. The ground temperature cools down, so remember this is one of the coldest fronts that we have. The weather may turn cloudy and rainy or snowy. So if it's really cold then that's when we get the snow, the sleet, or the hail. Cyclones and anti-cyclones. A cyclone is a swirling center of low air pressure. Cyclones and decreasing air pressure are associated with storms and precipitation. So this means the air pressure is dropping. Low air pressure, remember, goes with warm air, so that is associated with the storms and precipitation. Anticyclones have a high pressure center of dry air where the wind spirals outward from the center so this is more of the cold air because it has a higher pressure and this causes dry clear weather what causes climate climate is the average year after year conditions of temperature precipitation, winds, and clouds in an area. So to measure climate we are taking the weather on an average year after year of a particular place. Factors of climate include temperature, precipitation, the factors of temperature include latitude, which is where the place is located north or south of the equator. Altitude, which is how high it is above the surface of the earth. 
and distance from large bodies of water. So the further away it is from an ocean, it usually tends to be a little bit warmer, as well as ocean currents. Factors of precipitation include prevailing winds, which are all four of the global winds, the doldrums, the trade winds, the prevailing westerlies, and the polar easterlies. The presence of mountains can affect precipitation. Seasons. As a review of seasons from astronomy, this also can affect climate, as seasons are the result of the tilt of the Earth's axis. Remember to get your video notes signed and I will check them on Thursday. So good luck with getting your project done tomorrow and I will see you tomorrow.